from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. my co-workers, and also my virtual audience at home. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Let's get started, it's time for Hot Tupics. Topics are always better than topics, you know? <laughs> I got a telephone text last night from Black China, and yeah, this is the last thing that was on my phone before I fell asleep. Eight and a half hours, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and she says, I wanna be on the show, I wanna do the virtual, and I had an open invitation for her because I know that she's repeating on We right now, and I never saw the original on Zeus because I don't get that on my cable. So she texts, like, she texts, and so she says, how's Monday? And I text her back, I said, well, you are a real life hot topic, because you know we don't have guests on Mondays. Mondays are all about me, you, hot topics, ask Wendy, and the mess. So I figured I'd answer for all of us in saying yes. Yeah, yeah so she'll, yeah. She'll zoom in on Monday, and she'll look, well, I don't know what look she's going to give us but uh, she'll be here Monday. Now look, today is another very, very, very special day here at Wendy. It's Nortman's birthday. Yay! Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I may not have another birthday. <laughs> Woo, Happy you birthday, Norman. You can't scare somebody from the west side of Chicago like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're used to that sound. <laughs> what will you do uh, for the rest of the day? Um, there's not much I can do, honestly. Like, so it's just uh, binging some Netflix and chilling. Literally, Netflix and chilling. Well, I see you steamed your shoulders. <laughs> so there's... <laughs> <laughs> that was a wardrobe malfunction yesterday, two days ago. As the Uber was double parked, you right. had to grab your sweater. I put on my sweater, and there was still the hanger marks in it, in my shoulders. And you guys and noticed was that. And downstairs, and I said, well, I don't have time, and this is how I look today. <laughs> it's okay, Norman. We appreciate you around oh, here. Thank you. <laughs> double the steak for lunch. You'll, you'll get double steak, you'll be the first one in line. Okay. Steak. And so everything will be nice and hot and you take as much food as you need Perfect. for lunch today, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the Gorilla Glue lady, okay, come on. Can I just tell you something that we've been involved with? First of all, her mom watches the show every day. And I have the receipts. Can we play the receipt? And go. Wendy, this is Jessica Brown. I watch your show every day and been watching it for years. And I know you do a ham on a lot of people. And I know my baby wasn't gonna be exact from that. But yeah, you went in on her. She did a dumb thing. Yes, she did. But take it easy on her. Give her a break. Thank you. Oh. 
you know, I just enjoy that our show is involved in stuff and that people who watch, you appreciate us for what we do and you understand that all you have to do is give us a call and just everybody be civilized. So now, uh, Gorilla Glue um, daughter underwent four hour surgery yesterday in Beverly Hills. Yes. Um, he did not charge the surgeon for the surgery, which means, that, how much is her um, GoFundMe up to now? It's up to $20,000. $20,000 and $20,045. Wow, okay. So that's for more hair and handbags or, or whatever. Or buy your mom something special, um, Gorilla Daughter. So TMZ was there in the operating room. <laughs> And, and got all the video, thank you TMZ. Normally a surgery like this, according to the doctor who specialized in learning about chemicals where he grew up in Nigeria. Um, so it, it, normally he said a surgery like that would be uh, 12.5, uh, excuse me, $12,500. Uh huh. But his name is Dr. Michael Obajang. Yeah. And he tried it on a dummy scalp first all night long using real hair. And then what he ended up doing, he used adhesive remover, aloe vera, olive oil, and a touch of acetone. Now I would still suggest you don't try this at home because clearly he used all the things that you and I can buy our, ourselves. He didn't use anything surgical, but he just wanted to be on TV. <laughs> and so upon digging a little further, we found out that his wife, uh, some of you might know, has been on TV before on reality TV. Uh -huh. some, some random show that I do not remember called Second Wives Club. The Second Wives Club. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you see, you know, all right, uh, doctor, welcome to Hot Topics, there you go. <laughs> and um, and um, Gorilla Glue daughter said that she never hired a lawyer. So we got that, we're getting that all wrong. She doesn't have a lawyer. She doesn't want to sue Gorilla Glue. You know, Gorilla Glue is not using her as a spokesperson or anything like that. I suggest you don't try this at home. Gorilla Glue daughter, I'm glad that you got your, your um, hair back or whatever. The question is, will your hair grow? All right, if you can just go back on social media once you, show some growth. And then on account of your mom watches every day, we'll file an accurate report this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So in Texas, hi Marcus. I looked him up. He wants to date me. Why wouldn't I look him up? I have Marcus, I have Jeff, and I have Julian, and uh, Christian, and Tyrone. Yeah. He's in Texas. Anyway, so in Texas though, there's a woman who was scammed out of $100,000 She's only 63 years old, and I say only because, you know, in a few years, I'm gonna be 63. I don't plan on being stupid to be scammed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I still look at 63 like your mind is right, and you do the scam, and you don't get scammed. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, and $100,000. This sounds like our kind of girl. This is how you save girls. You don't buy a whole bunch of stupid stuff. When you're 63 years old, you're supposed to have that kind of money to throw around a little bit if you're fortunate enough to be smart. Well, she was scammed by a Bruno Mars catfish. Oh. Now you are gonna listen closely and please don't laugh until the end. I feel bad for her. She joined Instagram. She'd never been on Instagram. She has no idea what the gram does or what the gram is. She joined Instagram in search of companionship. She didn't join like a dating service or anything like that. She went right to the gram. And she met Bruno Man. That's what he called himself. Didn't show a picture, just called himself Bruno Man. And she fell in love. Aww. Well, you know on the gram, we send pictures to one another. 
We have little comments. All of ours are shady over here at the show. <laughs> but you know, if you're gonna scam somebody, then you know, you scam them. The imposter allegedly asked for money to cover tour expenses. So this is the real Bruno Mars. Okay, just hold on a moment because we do have a picture of the two guys who did the scamming. Yes, they're black. We got, there they are. There they is. <laughs> okay, so he, he, at first it was, I need $10,000 to cover some of my tour expenses. She says, no problem. Yeah. Sends it off to him. Two days later, these two go back in playing like they're Bruno and ask for $90,000. <laughs> But you know, if you're gonna steal, you gotta stick and move. You can't drag it out. You know, st stick and move before she tells her children, which by the way, she does have children. But she's sitting at home lonely like many people during pandemic and, and maybe she's looking at herself and saying, hey, I'm not gonna let this go to waste. I got some money in the bank. I don't feel like going shopping. Wendy already has Marcus. <laughs> um, so I want somebody too. I want somebody with more money than Marcus. I want a world-renowned performer. It's gonna take two of us to pull this off. And so that's what she did. Oh. Bruno, don't get involved with this, okay? Do not send this woman a Valentine's gift. Don't plan on, you know, serenading her from the window. I know you're a lovely man. We know you here, you've been at the show, whatever. But don't get involved. You know, Suzanne, yeah. he has a tendency to get, because he, he's got a big heart. Right. Right. But if he gets involved with this, it's just gonna go all wrong, in my mind. Just don't get involved. She should have known better. Aww. Hate to say it. Aww. Not all. She should have known better. Send flowers, maybe? No, we're not sending anything. Are you serious? We should send her flowers. We're not sending her anything. I feel bad for her. Pick a finger. <laughs> really? When I turn 63, are you gonna accept that kind of behavior from me? No. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so Machine Gun Kelly, you know, he's still with um, um, Megan Vox. Now, you know, he's 34 and she's 30. And they make an interesting... She's 34 and he's 30. Okay. Right. Okay. We messed you up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, uh, they did that to me. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, she's 34 and he's 30 and they're together. And uh, for Valentine's Day, if you haven't gotten anything, perhaps you would like this, uh, this clothing collectible that he's made. He's made this for them. It's the two of them making out. Now, now you can get the hoodie for $55 and you can get the t-shirt for $35. They've been dating each other since May of 2020. Now remember, she's still married to Brian Austin Green, who's got the vertigo. And his vertigo is so bad, he can't work. Like he literally, like I tell you I have vertigo, but at least I can, I can walk barely, but I can walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suzanne has it. I have she, it. But, and she walks, but barely, but uh -huh. you can at least still wear heels. Well, I just, just a kitten heel, that's it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm, I suffer from yeah, it. Yeah, and I you can't have bend my head down or anything right now. I'm going through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So vertigo can be really bad. And Brian apparently has, you know, on a scale of one to 10, he's got a 20. Like he, he needs to get out of bed and then he rolls to the floor. And then sometimes he's there for hours because now he can't get up. <clears throat> and holding things and like, it's prevented him from being able to work. And I believe him with this vertigo only because I'm part of that family in a light distant cousin way. Um, so his fans are very, very upset, this uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Now he's very talented. Remember he did Saturday Night Live. People like him, Pe people like him. I don't even know who he is, I like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I only know him I, through his name. And then after his name, I never thought about it anymore until all of a sudden it came across the Bureau Conference Room table. And, and I said, oh, that's what he looks like. Oh, that's, that's how he stands. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, his fans are saying this is cheesy and tacky and we don't like you, but you know what? For every one of his fans that he loses, he gains recognitions and, and fans like me. Like, I'm a fan and I don't even know who he is. And I would buy the t-shirt and the sweatshirt only because it's cute. I know Megan Fox through TV. And I know Machine Gun Kelly through the Bureau Conference Room table. <laughs> right. I might not care about the music. Do you have that music over there, uh, Sass? Machine Gun, yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you ever play it? Yeah. When you play it, do you ever see me snap my neck? Mm, not really. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Because I know you play off of what I wiggle to or you know snap to. If I snap hard and I thump my fist, then you know you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you never saw me do any of that with machine gun music? Nah, there was no neck, sna ne neck snapping. <laughs> neck snapping. <laughs> you know what was really funny to me? When you played Taylor Dane coming back from the commercial break mm -hmm. and you were acting all the way Mr. Hip Hop. You had the mean mug, <laughs> and you tell it to my heart. And you, you were doing it. I'm all the way hip hop. You were, no, but, but you were doing it like you were playing, you know, look. Lord Finesse or something. Like, like you were doing it. <laughs> oh, man. I'll try to act different next time I play that record. No. <laughs> Continue to be you. All right, all right. Yes, please. Dr. Dre's and his wife, I just wish that this was a story that we didn't have to bother with because every story I hear about Dr. Dre, I totally believe. A lot of them I think I started back on radio and then they've come to fruition and now you believe them. Anyway, so here's his wife. They're still married um, and she wants to know if he's financially supporting his mistresses. Well, in my mind, of course, that's why they're not talking. You know what I'm saying? A good mistress doesn't talk. You know, a good one, you pay her that good money and you keep your name on everything as the master, you keep your name on the house and stuff, but you move them into the best, you make them think that they're doing the most, you buy them a little piece of a car, and, and, and they're Beverly Hills shopping, and everybody at the boutiques knows that Dre is funding and that you're the mistress. Dre allegedly bought, I don't believe he bought it for her, but a $2.15 million mansion for one of the mistresses. Now what? <laughs> Now, I realize that, that property is not valued like it used to be, but what mansion do you get for $2.15 million? Anyway. Um, and Mrs. Dre wants, her, wants to know. To, uh, went to her, like, did he buy this for you? And she's like, furthermore, I don't wanna be involved with you. I'm closing the door and I'm calling the guards to escort you off of your husband's property. <laughs> in my mind, in my mind, that's what she said. Cause that's what I would say. You know, being one of the mistresses, I'd be like, oh, Mrs. Dre, just leave the mistresses alone. Soak your husband for all he's worth. If you need help from the Bureau, we are more than happy to assist. And if there's anything that Misha Lay or anybody wants to add, we will bring them into it. As a Black China will be here on Monday. Perhaps she has something to say as well. Right. In the meantime, there's more to the story, honey. Oh yes, the conference room table was full of literature this morning. Dre is 55, you know, and he's moved on with his life. He's going out with pretty girls for dinner. This is just last night. Yep. Now, who is the woman you ask? Well, upon digging through the mess on the conference room table, we found out that it's April Jones. 33 years old from Love and Hip Hop. Oh! Hey, April, we recognize you from your hand tattoo and that Chanel bag that you bragged about. I guess Dre gave that to you as well. So there, there she is, Dre. I would suggest you drop her as a mistress. She had a relationship with two of the members of B2K, Omarion and Little Fizz. 
Did we make up for yesterday's mistakes on Hot Topics? <laughs> I, I, I think that we did a lot of digging to give, give you a very entertaining story in this one right here. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar. <laughs> we don't like each other like that, but I just, I like to look at good looking men and men, and you need to know this, like to look at reasonable looking women. <laughs> so, so this is reasonable. Look a little see-through. Hi, Lammy. <laughs> Say.